stitchy friends. Welcome to my floss tube. My name is Catherine. Stitching in costume is my floss tube name. Uh, I'm not in costume, but I am stitching. <laughs> and uh, this is number 12 for me. I filmed this a couple times, so I'm hoping that I can get through this without uh, stumbling around and editing. Uh, let's see, we are in the end of November. It's almost December, which I know is a really busy time for a lot of us. I didn't really film in November. I had a lot going on and uh, like everybody. And, um, but I, here I am, it's still November, so um, I'm back. I wanna share some of my projects with you um, that I have completed that uh, I'm working on. So hopefully you're stitching and you're in your quiet, calm place. I hope you are. And welcome to my sewing room. So I'm gonna jump in with some finishes. Um, I've been kind of quiet and on social media, but I have been finishing things and um, starting a, a couple of things. So the first thing I have, I have been really into these pairs. You know, I'm all into the samplers and Santas uh, I showed this one, I think, a couple months ago. So the same pattern for Black Sampler November, which was started by Jacob from Modern Folk Embroidery, uh, because his birthday, I think, yes, his birthday is in November, and it was stitched on a sampler that is black. There's any sampler, and it could be big, small, whatever, um, something that you are already working on. So I just did the same pattern of my pair, my pair, it's Samplers and Santas is where I got the free pattern for this, and I did it in black. And this one is done on a 32 count. It was a mystery linen um, in my stash, but it matched this Blackbird fabric that I wanted to finish it in. I'll show you the whole thing here. And I did two strands of floss with anchor black. And I thought I could get away with one, and I probably could have, but um, I just wasn't really happy with the coverage, so I went to two, because it's a 32 count. And there is the bottom that I did. It's very primitive looking, and it sits up on my shelf. Um, I would probably do things a little bit differently. Um, it, just the shape wise, I'd probably make it, you know, so it was a little bit more tilted this way so that it sat a little bit um, easier on my shelf, but it works up there. I still have to do the herringbone stitch at the back, but um, my uh, wool felt a uh, wired leaf, and I think it turned out pretty good. Pretty cute. I still want to do one all in red, um, but again, it kind of gets down to what fabric do I want to see around it? You know, I like that it kind of blends in this black. And this one, it just felt like, yeah, a green velvet is what I had in my stash. So there they are, two, and counting. <laughs> so I will link that uh, free pattern below if you're interested in uh, stitching it. Join me. Pairs. Pairs are so fun to have displayed. Um, and they're just, they're fun to do. Easy, easy, simple, and hopefully, you know, my goal, hopefully next year, I'll figure out how to do some kind of um, overhead tutorial system so that I can show you how I finish some of my things. Um, I'm not, you know, a professional. I'm far from Bonna Pfeiffer, but um, I do enjoy it. It's fun for me to, uh, to figure out how to make things look um, smooth and uh, polished the best I can. You know, it's it's evolving. My my talent finishing things is evolving, as you'll see. Um, my next finish is something that I did, and this is inspired by Katie Strachan, and she has um, a rather new floss tube, but she, um, boy, she is amazing. She does a lot of um, intricate finishing work, um, and has done. Um, one of the caskets from um, Thistle Threads 
and a, a lot of other things. Uh, really special embroidery techniques that she does, and she's been doing been doing a series of tutorials on how to finish some of our cross stitch. I highly recommend that you check her out, give her some love because she's just doing these tutorials from the kindness of her heart and they're they're a wealth of information. So one of the things that she did is a blackbird designs, I think it's anniversaries of the heart, one of the, those, and she finished it into um, an ornament for her Christmas tree using Swarovski crystals. It's stunning, beautiful. and. You know, I always think of Blackbird as being very primitive and not really lending itself to that, but it is gorgeous with the crystals on it. Um, so I got inspired and I pulled out my um, Brenda Key's Ultimate Sampler Motif book and I found a snowflake in there. So I made myself a little ornament for the Christmas tree and I put some crystals on it. Let me see if I can get it to show the crystals and let me just tell you those Swarovski crystals I know I'm not sure that they're uh, going to be making them much longer if they're not they might even not be making them anymore so if you can find them online I highly recommend if you're interested in using them um, the two millimeter size is a perfect size to fit in a cross stitch over to and this is a 32 count and I did use this DMC uh, Floche and it's in 816 815 and I used one strand of this on a 32 and it covers it's a beautiful coverage and my finish on the back I just made I used a Vonna Pfeiffer tutorial on how to do um, an ornament and it's basically two discs and you uh, put your your finishing fabric on the back your uh, design on the front and then um, I sew these together and then I stitched this pearl trim around this uh, tassel I made myself and I did want to say about that um, I have I haven't really talked about it, but I have another YouTube channel that I started, oh my gosh, 10 years ago. And it was really just a way for me to share family videos with my family, um, things like that, uh, my dogs. And um, But because I was heavy into historical costuming, I do a lot of, um, I did a lot of classes um, based around that techniques on how to do everything. And so one of the things I learned, among other things, was how to do this tassel um, they're very simple but I made a tutorial and it's not bad I have to say I looked at it the other day because I was thinking of linking it to my channel here so that you could check it out they're so easy but there, um, there is like a technique that I use um, to make it come out easy easier and um, it's a good way to use up some of your uh, floss that you're not really sure what to do with uh, I, I go thrifting a lot and I find DMC all the time um, that has been cast off and it's a good way to use up some DMC that you're not really sure you're going to use in another project so um, and they make great little finishing as you know things to put on the bottom of an ornament um, scissor fobs things like that um, so I'll link that to um, my other thing and you can see my dog videos if you want to Okay, what else did I finish? I, um, okay, this one, it's a bit of an epic finish, I have to say. Uh, I started this a long time ago when I was uh, just coming back into stitching. So, um, cross-stitched in the 80s and 90s, and then I put it away, and I did a lot of other things. And then, I think it was about 2017, 2018 is when I rediscovered it, and it just kind of blew up and took over for me. Um, what I really, it's my comfort spot. Um, I do a lot of other things, but this one is the, this is the craft that really kind of centers me and um, calms me down and um, helps me focus. So anyway, um, just all of that to say that when I came back into stitching, what I knew um, how to do was to stitch on Ada fabric 
And so I bought a bunch of Ada and I, I did like the over dyed look, but I was scared of working on linen. So I bought like 18 count, 14 count Ada, and then I played around with dyeing it myself. So this is a piece of fabric that I dyed myself. Let me show you the chart first of all. And I think I showed this on a previous floss too, but I honestly, because I pick it up, put it down so many times, um, I didn't really uh, want to share it until I had it completed because really the only um, one I have left was this one. So my idea at the time, I was watching Bonna Pfeiffer and she was talking about, um, oh, she was showing the, the early Americans that she did um, all on one piece of fabric and she made a beautiful border to go around it and offered it for people to use and I thought well I could do this all in one piece of fabric that'll be simple it was simple um, and beautiful colors I used all the DMC but my story is let me pull it up and show you um, I did this on 18 count Ada and I over dyed it with a pearl writ it was a pearl gray writ and I didn't really dye it that much I just kind of lightly let it rest in the dye and pulled it out again so it had a very light modeling I wanted it to look like a winter sky and when I first started stitching this I started down with this one and I was watching uh, Teresa Vinette the kitten stitcher and she was talking about stitching in hand and so I thought well I'm gonna learn it I'm gonna teach myself how to stitch in hand I can do it I can do it so I started stitching in hand with this, but it was 18 count. All I knew was to use two strands of floss all the time. So I used two strands of floss, but once I had over dyed this, I feel like it shrunk up a little bit. So it was really finicky. It was very hard to get my stitches to lay correctly. And I ultimately gave up and went back to uh, a hoop, Q-snap, um, and that's how I actually finally got through it all. Let me see if I can get you closer. And you can see I've changed up some of the uh, skin tones and the hair to um, just give it a little bit more personality for me, make it more personal for me. Um, and there are some mistakes in here. And one of the reasons that it took me so long to finish it is that I made mistakes with the angels. This was the last one I did, um, but I won't show you. <laughs> I'm not going to point it out. <laughs> I know we all like to do that, but uh, anyway, it it's going to work. And so my idea for finishing this is to hopefully put it on um, some different kind of finish. I don't really want to frame it and have it, you know, on a wall at Christmas time. I feel like maybe a box, um, a, a really heavy duty box to put this on the top of it, or um, I'm not sure yet, but hopefully I'll get it finished, fully finished. Uh, before Christmas. That would be nice. Um, but there it is. It's Prairie Schooler Songs of the Season. And I'm really, really happy to have it completed. I love it. But you know when you get those projects that seem to be stretching on and on, you can't wait for it to be finished. But I know I'm going to look back at this next year and say, "Ooh, I can't believe I did that. Um, okay, let's move on. I think I have one more finish. And again, out of this, and so I was on a little roll with um, the ornaments, and I thought, oh, I'm going to do a little girl out of this. So I picked a little girl, um, I can't remember, oh, page 32, if you have this book, it's page 32. I'd show you, but it's all the chart, and I I don't want to... I don't want to be that person. Um, this is on a 32 count, and I used the Gloriana Hollyberry silk, and there she is. And I put uh, crystals around her, and I did the gold Krynik on her dress. Is it a 32? Silk Weaver 36 Buttercream. I think I over dyed this with coffee because I, I got a spot on it, I think, and so I just dunked it in coffee. So the buttercream, um, I have another project on the same fabric, but it's a lot lighter, and I wanted it to look more primitive. And so I also 
the beautiful Vanna Pfeiffer, who I will link below, has so many fantastic tutorials. And one of the tutorials that she does is how to make cordings for your uh, for trimming out um, ornaments and um, uh, flat folds, things like that. So I got my Krynik winder. You can get one on Amazon. I'll try to link it. I know I'm, I'm already saying, oh, I better write these down, all the links. It takes me a while to link everything because um, I upload and then I have to go back in and add all the links. So I'll, give me a couple of days and um, hopefully all of that will be up. But anyway, the cord winder, you will find uh, Krynik cord winder on Amazon, blah, blah, blah. All to say, I made this cord to go around her. I'm gonna do her in a circular pattern and probably do a little tassel for the bottom and um, love her. I think that's, and you know, that just took a couple, couple of days and it was really just one of those little extra things that I would just kind of do at, you know, 10 minutes, 15 minutes at a time and it was done before you know it. Um, so, yes. Again, thanks to Katie for um, inspiring me to do all the shiny crystal things. I love their, I love finding new ways to add sparkle to uh, different projects. It's a lot of fun. Okay, let's jump in. Um, I'm gonna dive into my whips, and those are my finishes. There are one, one more thing I would like to uh, show you is I have been playing around with scissor fobs. So I have never really used scissor fobs. It always felt like it was kind of, you know, unwieldy and just one more thing I had to pay attention to on the table or something. But I found a tutorial and I just started to make them. Um, so I got all of these little lobster claws off Amazon. I can't remember what I paid for them. Again, if I can link it, I will, but they weren't expensive. I think I got maybe 20 of them for it feels like I got them for $10 or less. Um, so that's what I made is a little scissor fob. I made a few of them and they are pretty handy. I have to say, uh, if your scissors kind of get tend to get up and walk away <laughs> or they fall into the crack of the sofa or you know on the ground, uh, it's a little bit easier to find them when you've got a fob on them. And these are my Dovo scissors and Mm, I want to treat them well and make them feel special. So I have those and I also have um, my Kai scissors. These are the ones that I go to, my super sharp. And I do love the curved ends so I don't snip my fabric because mm, I've done that before. And this one, I just got those little alphabet beads. Oh, I forgot. I forgot the bird. Okay, oh my, and it's the wrong time, so okay. I never really changed it because you know what? In my sewing room, time doesn't matter. It just, you know, it goes quickly up here because it's just so peaceful and calm. Anyway, this one's uh, on these scissors and I have a couple more and they're kind of spread throughout the house. Um, I don't just sew up here. Oh, let me say really quick because I know sometimes people talk about how they stitch um, and I talk about that at and you know the first uh, floss tube but sometimes it's fun to refresh you know because you don't always remember how everybody stitches I stitch two-handed I like to stitch standing up um, so I'm an old dancer uh, back issues so I like to stand up as much as I can I don't always when I stitch but that's one of the things I do in the morning I have my bigger projects on a bigger frame um, set on a table and I stitch two-handed and um, how else do I stitch oh I, I do stitch uh, sitting sometimes and I have a hoop uh, one of those duchess hoops I really love I've lucked out and found a couple at the thrift store lately for a dollar it's been amazing they're kind of beat up the felt but they still work pretty well and I have like something that's like a Lowry stand that flips, so that sits on my table and my, my hoops go in there. And again, I can stitch two-handed, um, but I also sit. Uh, so when I sit, um, I know sitting for me is like poison. So as much as I can, um, if I remember, and I try to, um, when, I'm, when I'm stitching, I stand up when I thread my needle. So 
Every time I thread my needle, I try to pay, pay attention to standing, getting my body to move around a little bit, and then I sit back down. And it just kind of, you know, it keeps my body from getting too stagnant, and it keeps the pressure off my spine. And um, that's a little health tip for you. And I know um, Daylene from It's So Grateful uh, had, uh, she. I just have to say, she is genuinely probably the sweetest person I've ever like seen on floss tube when I first saw her I'm like oh nobody can be that happy but the more you watch her you just realize it's a choice she makes to look at life that way and so she's so inspiring to me that way and she had um, asked uh, viewers to leave a comment about a health tip and that was my health tip I gave her and she was so sweet she sent me um, this beautiful card and a bag she made and a beautiful little glitter thing for my um, for my floss drops and uh, yeah, uh, Daylene, if you happen to be watching, I just wanted to say hey and I love you. Thank you and you're wonderful. So all that to say, floss things. Uh, wanna, no, what was I talking about? Scissor fobs. Why was that? Whatever. See? My my brain. Moving on. Okay, I might have to edit this. So let's see. Okay, jumping into my whips. Let me waste no more time. No more of your time will be wasted. <laughs> Splendid September. Now I have wanted to do these blackbird stockings. I would love to do all of them, but I, I bought this a long time ago and I just never picked it up. And I thought, hey, Let's just start something. You know, I'm uh, in the mood uh, to, uh, when I get kind of um, overwhelmed sometimes, I want to work on something that I feel I have a prayer of finishing, you know, in a relatively short time. So this is one of the, this one here that I wanted to try. And I got, I just pulled DMC, and these are all, a lot of them are the DMC uh, that were in the Tudor B, which is by the Blue Flower, and this was my finish on the Tudor B. Let me see if I can pull it out for you. And you can see, boy, it's beautiful on this fabric, but you're going to see in a second that it's way, these colors are so different on the fabric that I chose to do that little stocking on. Let me see if I can get it stay um so let me see if i can pull it up on my board here because i think it makes it a little bit easier to see when it's like that this is where i am on it i'm not um done <laughs> clearly um i have been waiting because i would like to personalize it for a beloved family member and this is the floss and so this is all the Tudor B floss but I also added this blue which is DMC 932 and you can see that in there and uh, so if you're curious about all of the uh, DMC you can um, just go in one two three and um, or someplace that has the Tudor B and you can look at the called for DMC but Anyway, that's, I, I wanted to make it pop a little bit more. I am really drawn to, and you'll see, samplers, and I'm drawn to samplers that have a lot of different colors happening. I love it. I love it when they pop. So this is going to be a lot of fun to fully finish and uh, get on my Christmas tree this year. Yes, that's going to happen. So that is my splendid September. I'm going to take a moment and put things back in their bags. I'm not going to you know, rustle too much or zip, but I don't want to lose things. So there's one. All right. Number two, let's push on here is Mary Ramage, Mary G. Ramage. And this is by uh, Hands Across the Sea, one of their little gems. And I started this thinking um, that it would be really cute in our bar. Now we have a bar. We, we're not really partiers. Uh, but it came with the house, so we have this, you know, cool bar, and we have some bottles of wine in there that uh, we partake of periodically. But um, this says uh, on it, uh, wine is a mocker, strong drink is raging. So this was done in 18, uh, 
91 and it was a temperance sampler so I thought it would be fun to finish this and uh, put it up and display it in the bar but we'll see you know uh, it would be great anywhere so it might end up on a sampler wall and this is my progress I'm not going to unroll it all the way let me see this is 36 count and I want to make sure I give you the, the right information I'm using the call for DMC and it is on 36 count toasted almond by hand dyed by Stephanie. And that's where I am. I did the little tea kettle and worked my way over. I've done some of the blue eyelet stitches, but I'm gonna wait to uh, complete the entire border. Um, and I probably will put it on a, on a roll a roll frame, a scroll frame. But uh, this is one of the things that I do up in my sewing room lately. And so it goes into my uh, my hoop and I don't want to distort the, um, the eyelet stitches. So I'm going to wait on those. And that's the colors. Really pretty. And I'm really happy about the pink house in the middle. Uh, I have a lot of red houses. So a pink house is going to be really, really cute. Oh, Really bright colors. I did change the yellow. Um, the yellow it called for, let me see if I can find it in here. It was, um, I don't know if I even have it in here anymore, but it felt, that might be it. It felt really kind of orangey. Yeah, it was kind of an orangey color. I think that's what it was. But anyway, I wanted it to pop and almost look like a gold frame around it. So that's what I did. And I changed it to 3820. There we go. So that one, I have to say, everybody says, and they're right, those uh, little gems that are in the spiral bound are great. I mean, it's nice to be able to just download things, but sometimes it's really nice to just have it, you know, in just have it in that form. It's so uh, sturdy and Oh, it's so nice. So there's that one. Okay, moving on. Jesse Watson, another Hands Across the Sea. So this has really been the year of me starting that. And um, I'm really drawn. I'm drawn to the Hands Across the Sea samplers. I love history. I love the stories behind the stitching. That's what makes me uh, really, really happy. So this was... Um, started by uh, Barbara the Raspberry Stitcher and uh, it's a sal that she is hosting and we started in April for Autism Awareness Month. Let me show you where I am on that. Uh-oh, she's kind of buried. So I have this on a scroll frame but I'm going to unroll it for you but let me just show you. Uh, my progress. I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy. So I got the border uh, to meet up. Yay! Happy dance. And um, now I am headed back. Um, I'm probably going to fill in all of the berries on the border and then do the name and then work my way up. So uh, the last thing I have to do it probably what I'm going to finish with is that eyelet heart that's up there. And I probably will wait and put my last stitches in that um, in April. So we'll see. Uh, but it feels good to have a Hands Across the Sea um, completed, almost completed. And I finished um, Ann Morrison, so I did two this year. And uh, woo! And it's not ginormous, but. Um, and he, oh, the Vicki Clayton silks are what I'm using. And they are glorious. They're so soft. Uh, this is a 36 count Silk Weaver buttercream. So this was the story. So the buttercream you can see is uh, almost got a yellow, which butter is yellow. So it's kind of that yellow cast in it. I feel like it was very close to uh, the cover photo. So that's why I chose it. It's a looser weave. So what's happening for me is it feels like uh, it gives it a softer effect. Now the house, 
you can see pops just a little bit more. What I did was I double crossed my stitches and let me just explain. So the first leg of my cross happens and then the second leg happens twice. So I do two on the second leg and it just gives it just a little bit more of a pop, a little bit more coverage um, and really uh, makes that red brick read. I love that house. I love it so much. So um, that's where I am with it. And yes, I have, uh, because I'm using one strand of floss, I have a lot of floss left over. So that's going to be fun to use on a different project. Um, and this, this is what I wanted to show you. This is actually the buttercream, but dyed with coffee. So it's the very same fabric. And it actually, when I did that, it feels like it made it, um, it gave it a bit of a tighter weave, which I really like, because it feels like this was maybe just a little bit too open for me, but I still love it. I really, um, I'm happy to have it uh, almost done. See the difference of those fabrics. Coffee, easy, easy. I just put it in the Tupperware and put it outside in the sun for a day or two. <laughs> and then I bring it in. And the neat thing is if you don't like it, you can rinse it off and it goes almost back to where you started. Almost, not really. Okay, moving on. So in my Teresa Kogut bag, and you can get this on her website. I got the black zipper and I can't remember the size that I got. Um, there's different sizes of it, but it came really quickly. Uh, this is Rose Cottage Pin Keep by Stacy Nash. I haven't really worked on this a lot, but I wanted to show you because I've made a mistake that I'm thinking of leaving in. So <laughs> I'll show you my silly mistake, which, uh, I didn't notice, and when I finally noticed, I just laughed. Okay, so this is on 36 count. Picture this plus Heartland. I believe it's the called for. I could be wrong about that. And I am using uh, the called for DMC with one, do I have weeks? I have one weeks in here, um, Pal Palmico because I needed, uh, I just felt like it wasn't, I wasn't getting the look I wanted. So I wanted to add a little bit more, a um, little bit more of a border around it so I could see the border a little bit. I don't think it matters. So here's my mistake I made. And I, I have to point this out because I think it's funny. So uh, I'm stitching along and I thought, well, I'm gonna go uh, this way and go across with the alphabet so that I can really make sure that I get my borders lined up, right? Before I try to go all the way down. I wanna make sure I get the right number. So <laughs> I get all the way across here. I'm like, oh, that's where I put my initial. And I'm like, wait a minute, what's this one supposed to be? Well, this is supposed to be a family initial, but now guess who I'm related to? Stacy Nash. She's my sister. She's not, but she's my stitching sister. So I might just leave that because um, I love her so much. <laughs> I follow her on Instagram. I have a lot of her patterns and um, I'm, I don't know. I might just leave that. We'll see. We shall see. So Rose Cottage. And uh, like I said, I haven't really picked it up and worked on it very much. Um, it's all wrinkly and but uh, I want to finish it because it's adorable, super cute, and uh, it's not that big. And so, yeah, that's one of the things about next year. I'm, I have so many like epic samplers that I you'll see I want to finish that uh, I just want to, if I start something, it's going to be on the smaller scale. There's sometimes those small ones have a lot of stitching. Okay, I forgot to unzip this. So this is just in, I keep a lot of my projects in these plastic bags. Um, they just feel like they're the right size and they store it easily. So this is Out of the Home for the Holidays, book by Blackbird Designs. And oh, look at all of these really cute stockings. I wanna do that one too. 
Ah, there's so many, so many things I want to do. So this is Christmas Garden. And so many people are doing this right now. And it is gorgeous, I have to say. Now, I'm having a little issue with it, and it's not because of the design. It's not because of what they called for. It's because I tried to mess with it. <laughs> I should have stuck. I think I should have stuck to the Blackbird colors. I'm still going to love it. Um, I tried to make it pop a little bit more. I'm doing this on a 36 count uh, vintage pearled barley by Lakeside, which you know is hard to come by. And um, uh, anyway, it's got like a darker cast to it, this one. And so I wanted to make the colors pop a little bit. So what I did was I, rather than use the heirloom gold, I used a classic color works and it's called, sorry, I think it's called Her Crown or, I'm trying to do this with two hands, Queen Bee. I don't know, what does that say about me? And so because I used that, it felt like I couldn't really see it. It wasn't really reading. So what I did was I added in uh, four, 420, which is uh, a DMC color, but it was a Victorian motto uh, from Eliza Belcox. She did a thread pack, so I thought, well, I've never tried Victorian model. I'll just get the thread pack and then use it as, I'll just have it in my stash. So I pull it out from time to time, different pieces of it, and it is nice to stitch with. Um, and so that's what I did the bottom of that upper portion with. And because I couldn't really have, these weren't really reading to me, I didn't want to pull them out. <laughs> So I thought, well, I'm just going to go in with the 420 and fill in different areas. So that's what I did. I just got creative and added little bits here and there. And then I changed that snowflake up. And I'm not sure I really love it. Uh, I mean, I am see it from here. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's it, it'll work. It's going to look pretty. I'll love it. Um, but... I almost feel like I would have just used what they called for um, because I was watching Kim the Contented Stitcher uh, is making incredible progress on hers and it is glorious. It's so pretty. Um, but this is pretty. It's very pretty. And I'm using, the other colors I'm using are um, uh, Belle Soise. One is cranberry, the red, and the other is collard greens, the green one. And collard greens, I don't know, it feels like it's my favorite green. It's such a, a nice kind of muted, but still green green, kind of foresty looking. I guess it does have a little bit of a blue tint to it, but yeah, there we are. Christmas garden, it's coming along. Not gonna be done this Christmas, but I'm going to say next Christmas, probably. But I'll work on it at Christmas time. Um, it'll be my Christmas time stitch, uh, 36 count, one strand of floss over two threads. And so it's nice to do if I'm sitting at the TV. And I do want to say that I do use magnification. I use uh, glasses and um, you know the magnifying glasses. And I also use a magnifier that's lit up. and um, it definitely is something that I have to use um, at night, especially. I, it's more important almost to have light to me than the magnification, but it's all, I need it all. Okay, did I bring up that? I don't think I have that. So I'm gonna show Anne Uffendale. Again, yeah, not a lot of progress on this one. I'm doing her in the called for Avera Soise Silks. Let me pull her up here. And what I have done is jump on down to the bottom. So because I have fear of not meeting things correctly, um, even though my border is done, and yes, I made a mistake on the border, but 
it's gonna work <laughs> all the flowers I mean it's gonna be beautiful I started down here and started to work my way across the bottom and I'm just gonna save uh, the over one I, I'll, I'll you know throw it in there from time to time but that over one at the top <clears throat> is pretty intense so again let me pull up the colors here for you and I have this on my <clears throat> roller frame really beautiful silks um, and clearly this was before I was really knowing how to put things on floss drops with them all being the same length <laughs> but uh, there you get closer yeah it's just gorgeous and this is one of, one of the um, samplers that uh, I kind of got close to the top you know, and so for sure, absolutely, this will go into um, a framer that knows how to work with uh, this kind of sampler and um, knows how to work with samplers, period. And uh, somebody that is experienced and hopefully, um, I mean, if I can get into total framing, that would be great. Um, I'm hoping to have this done and I'm going to throw this out there and I know uh, like Michelle, Mama Loves You GB says don't. You know, I don't want to say when I'm going to finish it. It puts the kibosh on things, but I feel like I want to finish it next year for sure. So if I can get this part done by my flossiversary, which I think is in February. I can't remember. I think it's February. But if I can travel across and get most of the this bottom portion done, I, I'm going to feel really good. And then I can start to work up and... Um, I'm a little nervous about doing the padded satin stitches, not because I'm afraid of padded satin stitches. It just feels like it's so particular the way I have to outline and then come back in and, and fill in. But I maybe I'm overthinking it because it's gonna it'll look great, you know, if I get even close to that. And um, so making progress, but slow crawling along. But now that I kind of have an idea about where I want to be with it next year um, it might inspire me and I would like to I don't know my birthday's in July if I can finish it by July I'm just gonna be over the moon so but I have to commit to it I'm almost thinking of doing whip go just a lot of people uh, are doing that Jesse Marie does stuff talks about it um, she started it a long time ago I guess a couple of years ago and uh, I'm trying to figure it out I'm, I watched her, her uh, floss tube on it, and I'm like, wait, I don't know if my little brain can figure all of that out, but um, I, I'll do more research. If, if that is something that is going to inspire me to pick my stuff up and, and pay attention to what my whips are, uh, that, might be, that might be worth the effort to do that. So we shall. I'll see. Okay, moving on. So I love this one so much. Traditional samplers. A tender heart sampler. You, I got this on Kitten Stitcher. She might still have it. I think it was a uh, new old stock. I really, really love this chart. And I've done um, another one that uh, is from the same sampler company. And I started this on... Did I say my Ann Effendel is on a 36 count vintage pearl barley? I did say that. This one is on, let me just make sure I give you the right information. This is 40 count, Dusty Road by Seraphim. So let me get my board out here to make it, a, and it's kind of wrinkly because this is definitely one of the ones, uh, one of the samplers that I have up in my sewing room and I kind of wedge into its bag. I have a lot of fabric left over. That'll make a nice, ornament. Um, that's where I am on it. So I got the whole middle part done. Yes. Yay. And now I'm down here and working across. So I'm clipping along on this, that big house. And I'm using my own uh, floss conversion. So um, I just kind of grabbed things that looked close to the picture and looked good on this fabric. So, you know, it's just your basic. Let me pinks, reds. The red I'm using is Schoolhouse Red. 
uh, the Gloriana Schoolhouse Red and uh, a various different colors. Iris is the purple that I went with for uh, some of the lettering. The pink is Charlotte's pink. Uh, this, I believe, is collard greens again. I love the collard greens. This gray is called Cobblestone. It's a Gloriana silk, and that's in there somewhere. The house, uh, the roof of the house, let me see where that one is. It is Wood Smoke by The Gentle Arts. And so I wanted that roof to have some variegation. That's where I am on it. And again, it's on the 40 count. You know, I have to say, I don't really work. Uh, I'm still, I, my love is 36. And I think 36, uh, I was watching, uh, I can't remember now. She just has a new floss tube. Oh. I'll try to remember. Anyway, uh, she was saying that 36 is uh, very the popular girl right now, definitely. Um, the belle of the ball. 36 count is so nice because it's easy to see and you can, um, easier to see. And it feels like the coverage is just as good or pretty good. Um, 40 count is a little bit more of a challenge for me. I have to say, I have to work a little bit harder, but I, I, I love it. I definitely love the way it looks. This size is going to be about the same size as the other one that I finished, which I think was a 32. It might be a 32 count. And I used two strands of floss. This is one strand. Um, there we go. A tender heart sampler. So I'm getting, I'm getting close on some of my samplers, which makes me a super happy. Uh, let me just, um, I'll probably pause here for a second. Okay. Uh, yeah, I thought I had brought up my Consider the Lilies, which I did not. Um, I left it downstairs, so. Um, I love it, my Consider the Lilies. Maybe I left it in the other room. Anyway, I haven't done a lot of progress. My, my plan on that, let me show you the chart, because I do have that up here. And I have all of the flosses for it. Um, my plan, I haven't really done a lot. I, I've, um done this little area here and some of the flowers and I thought you know I was watching Sherry Colorado cross stitcher and she uh, talked about her how what she how she structures her samplers so she likes to do one leg of the cross all the way around the vine part and when she meets her her border up then she returns and fin fills it in. And I really like that idea because I've done borders where you get all the way around and you've done some other work and it doesn't meet. And it's so frustrating for me. Um, so I, even though this border is a dream, I have to say, I still make mistakes. And so that kind of uh, approach to it, I like. So if I can get that border uh, completed and I originally thought oh I'll get the border just that first leg of the border around uh, by the end of December I think it's a bit of a tall order December gets to be busy um, so I don't know that that will happen but you know I you know we're hey our kids are grown we do secret Santa and in our family and so we started that last year uh, so you don't buy gifts for everybody. You pick one person and there's a, a limit to how much you spend. You can get them more than one gift if you want, but you don't want to go over the limit of, you know, so everybody feels equal and nobody feels stressed. And it takes a lot of stress out of the holiday, which what could be better than that? A Christmas that's not stressful? Um, that's the idea is to spend time with people you love and and, and make it enjoyable. So that's what we decided to do. I just mentioned that because Christmas is coming and December can be, uh, it can be stressful for people sometimes. So what do I do when I get stressed? Well, sometimes I shop. So I've been doing a little shopping, just a little bit, because it feels like fabric is just like so hard to get. I have things on one, two, three stitch where I ask them to notify me uh, when it shows up and I'll get the notification, you know, maybe eight hours, I'm, I look at it eight hours later and whatever they've notified me about is gone. 
And so when I see things, sometimes I just grab them. So I found these on eBay from a seller. They're all 36 count. And some of them I had not heard from, I didn't hear about before. So this one's called Ice Tea. So first of all, I got a, a white Zweigart. This is from 123 Stitch uh, that I can dye. And I can pull it up here so you can see the other colors against it. So this one's called Ice Tea. It's quite a big count, uh, quite a big size. And a very interesting primitive look to it. So I think it would be really pretty for a sampler. Uh, it's showing up pretty dark, right? Um, I don't know if it's that dark. It feels like it's probably right there. Uh, and it's got some light modeling. I think it would be good for maybe a Christmas stitch. I could see a snowman on that. Um, Oh yeah, really pretty. So there's one and I got, like I said, eBay, um, I got a really good deal. I don't know how I got them so easily, but I did. Uh, this one's called Frozen by Forbidden Fiber Company. Let me see how that's reading. Right about there. And that is beautiful. It's uh, got a really light taupey gray, uh, very subtle modeling. And I almost don't want to say it. It's like somebody just went with some pink on it. <laughs> uh, I don't know if it's reading, but it's just the a slightest little blush, just a blush. But it's not that I, I wouldn't uh, even you wouldn't even notice it really. I guess once it has um, very often once once these have some floss on them, I don't think you really even notice. And there it is against the iced tea. Okay, and a couple more here. So this one I got on 123. This is a picture of this plus sand, which I've had before, and I really love it. And these, again, are all 36 count. Sand is beautiful. And my last piece I got, because I love Brenda, and I love Laura. Brenda and Laura, the um, cereal starter, and Brenda, the sampler stitcher on Instagram. 36 count American chestnut by r, r Fabric. Look at that, that's a beautiful sampler color. Really pretty, and let me, and you can see, so it's kind of, that's the iced tea, and you can see that against the iced tea is quite a bit lighter. So yeah, definitely a beautiful sampler color. And those that was pretty much all the fabric I got. I have a couple of charts. I had to get Bristol Berries. Uh, I have done a couple of Erica Michaels Berries and I love, I love those projects. I love finishing them. Um, I love that they go pretty quickly. I really love this little sampler and would love to do that and uh, frame it or make it into a, a needle book or something. Not sure, but I love that. So that is some haul. And this one, I'm I'm on the, the Laura birthday train. I jumped on the bandwagon to be a part of this beautiful sampler. Um, this is by The Scarlet Letter, and Laura Duet, the serial starter, is having a big birthday. Um, and it is January 1st, and they're doing a stitch along with this. So she loved this border. I love this border, and I remember seeing this months ago thinking, ooh, I just like the angel border. And this is going to make me extremely unpopular, but I'm not really a big, huge fan of the geode bird. I'm sorry. I know everybody, I know it's historically accurate um, and it's really cool. It's really cool. Um, I just, I'm not sure if I'm going to stitch it. Um, so I have ideas, but I love the border. Definitely going to do that. I'm all, all into that. I've got uh, all of the DMC that I have yet to put on the floss drops. And I did get the almond M&Ms skin tones because they're gorgeous. I just dropped one. They're really, really pretty. Um, 
And these are all silks that she hand dyes. I'll try to link her below so you can order some. It, you know, she hand dyes them for us um, specifically when you order it. So it's not like, you know, she's got a big stash of this and it's a shop. She is a, a cottage industry, just somebody on her own that loves, to, loves us and loves this community and is willing to put something like this together for us. So that'll be the various skin tones on the angels and I'll play around with their hair colors and I'm really, really looking forward to starting that January 1st. I'm not sure what I'm going to stitch it on. It kind of feels like I, I mean, I love the American chestnut, but I'm not sure. It depends on what works with all of the flosses. So I've got to get those on their drops and then have a look. Uh, this might also be a contender. Weigh in if you feel like you, oh, that one's good too. So if you have an opinion, I'd love to hear it. Um, I probably should stick with the called for. <laughs> so we'll see. I think that's all my haul. Is that it? I think that's it. Well, y'all, here we are into December. Um, I wish you all the best, and uh, I hope that you have a very peaceful holiday. I hope to be back in December with some more uh, finishes and um, maybe a little not so much haul because I need to be uh, being a secret Santa. So <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Um, okay, so I would like to say thank you for watching. Thanks for hanging out with me. I really appreciate you being here. If you leave a comment, I read them all. I try to comment back on everything and I really appreciate you. Um, so here is wishing you many peaceful hours with your needle and your thread. Bye. Love you guys. Thank you.